What up, players? It is Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a White Dwarf Weekly. Hi, Duke. Welcome to a White Dwarf Weekly review. And today we're looking at issue 103 from White Dwarf. It is the the big issue, the big release are these fire slayers on giant monsters. Mag magma 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 droths. We're gonna take a look at it from a painter hobbyist's perspective, which is my own, and see what value it has. Is it worth the four dollars? Do I give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Last week I was thinking of doing one of these Patreon exclusive videos, but it was so packed with just fire slayers stuff that there wasn't really much of of an appeal, I think, for a wider audience than if you were interested in, in getting into this new army range, which is, you know, what Games Workshop will do with their White Dwarfs. If they're releasing something, they really want to promote it. But this week, there's a little bit more interesting variety to it, so let's dive in. You've got, first off, right off the bat, you've got a very big emphasis on these new giant monsters. Magma Droths. Yeah, Magma Droths. And uh, I have a Magma Droth right here. Chewing on his, on his little ham bone. Duke! Dookie, what are you eating? What are you eating, Dookie? Bone! Alright, there's your, <laughs> there's your daily dose of Duke. So, it looks like they really want to pump these big, big, um, big monsters out. Let's see what comes in it. The first thing I noticed when I was reading through these articles was that you are able to make one of three options, the rider, the rune father, the rune son, or the rune smiter. Whichever one you choose, the other two can be made on foot. Great value, and especially because you get the war scrolls in, or the battle tome, or whatever they're called in this issue, it's, it's good to have a little bit of extra value for, for the money that you're going to be spending. And it's not like the Mortarks where you can really just make one unless you do some fancy magnetization work. So, uh, I think that was a good point. That was a good thing for them to do. One of the silliest things, I think, is the Rune Father has his axe as a giant key, which is used to unlock the treasure hold of, of, their, of their clan or whatever. And um, I thought that was interesting, but just not very practical if this is the warlord of your army and he's supposed to be a super good fighter. His weapon is also a key. Uh, it's, I don't know. Conceptually, I think it's pretty... It's okay. I don't know if it's completely original. I, I can't think off the top of my head uh, anything that's similar to that, but oh well. Then you've got what I think are the new rune smiths. They're the rune smiters. And this is my favorite color scheme for these magma droths. This black coal with the fire burning on the inside. I think the red is just a little bit too, too much red. There's a lot of interesting contrasting colors between the black and the orange there. And here is the rune, rune sun. This is the rune sun. He's a uh, young, like, princely noble. One of the things I thought was interesting was because he's young and fiery and tempestuous, he's got, like, tons of runes hammered into his back and maybe more so than, than other, others in his clan, but he's really trying to, trying to get that, get that Urgold. So they are releasing the Codex or the Army Book or the, the Battle Tome, I guess they're called, and uh, that is coming out next week, I think. You also get some reboxes, a uh, reboxing of Nagash, uh, speaking of the Mortarks, uh, more Gast, and a Spirit Host. So, one of my big complaints about the End Time series was that the more Gasts were only use, usable in Warhammer 8th Edition if you played End Times games. Their rules didn't, they didn't have rules for regular Warhammer games. So, I guess they're going to be making them available and usable in any Age of Sigmar game, which is smart because they are really awesome looking models and I'd hate to think that they would only release a range of models for something like the end times which was over and now completely gone. You got a new book of four short stories for the Fire Slayers you have available this week. I just saw this in the store. I didn't go out and buy any of them though. They didn't really strike me as too interesting. I wanted to get one of these guys but I don't think the store had them. So oh well. Horus Heresy Black Library has released a cover art collection book. I saw on when I looked through my email, they had an email of that, and I thought it was pretty interesting. But not, I don't know if it's something that I would put down, you know, as much money as they want for it when you can easily find the images online if you're looking for that inspiration. 
Okay, this is a huge, huge plus for me. This is the giant transfer sheets that Forge World released. Now, I've got some transfer sheets that I'm going to be taking a look at, especially I have the old uh, Death Guard Legion transfer sheet. They redid it because they added in a bunch more symbols and the large transfers on the bottom left, which you can use for their banners or for vehicles. They also did the Iron Hands one, which I think is a great idea. A lot of people play the Iron Hands. They have terrific rules. And uh, you can not only do just Clan Raucon symbols, they also have other Clan symbols as well there on the left. So you can really do a, a variety of different clans. My favorite clan though, and I don't see the symbol when I take a look at the transfer sheets are, I, um, oh gosh, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but their symbol is something like a two-headed hydra, like a serpent, two-headed snake. And I just think that's such a, such an awesome symbol. And it's, it's very Alpha Legion looking, but it's kind of like from the side. And I love that, that, that Legion symbol. I think it's really, really cool. Okay, you also get Night Lord's etched brass symbols for any vehicles, banners, special uh, special characters, the small ones you could put on a special character. I'm glad they're doing that. And I'm really, really pleased with their Legion transfer sheet because it has a lot of great details on it. You also get a house for, I, I believe, yeah, a knight household transfer sheet if you want to build your house Mar Maccabius. And you also get a solar auxilia transfer sheet. This is pretty cool. It uh, represents just a few of the cohorts found in the Imperial Army at the time of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. And on the sheet you'll find insignia for many of the cohorts mentioned in the Horus Heresy Book 4 Conquest, including the Lord Marshal's own, the Manishian Commonwealth, and the Saturnine Rams, to name but a few. You will also find hundreds of markings for all your troopers. If you run out, we'd be surprised. Yeah, I think this is a great resource. Anytime you can get a... Legion or a Forge World transfer sheet. I remember when I first started collecting and I had I'd opened up a box of Space Marines, plastic Space Marines. I'd pull out the transfer sheet and think, oh, these are just terrible. Like, why would I want to use these? They're hard to use. They're very cartoony. They're big and blocky. But I think these will really, really make your make your models stand out. So the next article is a focus on what you get with the Get Started painting boxes what are they called start collecting that's it i knew it was a weird term so these are boxes that are at a great discount if you want to get a new army or add to your existing army they each come with like a troops choice a special choice of sometimes if you're lucky a big vehicle and a character so for 85 dollars american you can get a squad i believe a squad of cadian shock troopers one heavy weapon sprue a lehman rust tank and a commissar and I think if you add those up individually you get like a, a really good discount so I definitely suggest picking one up if you are so inclined it's a great value games workshop hardly known for doing things like that and putting things into bunches and bundles and creating a great value but it looks like they really want to bump their model sales up so they've got the most popular armies on that great great idea okay next you've got a paint splatter for the magma droth it's the red one with the black scales, red skin, black scales. Not one that I'm too much of a huge fan of, but it's nice to see that they break down everything from the magma drop itself, the glowing uh, underbelly, glowing fire breathing through, and the stone. You've got your, your special character dwarf skin guide and hair and gold, and the green marble, which I think, or the green cloak, I'm sorry, which is a good touch, as well as pipe smoke. Hey, if you wanna see how they do pipe smoke, there you go. What I like, okay, let's talk just for a second about what I like about this new setup. The Games Workshop used to put in their White Dwarfs master classes where they would really break down how to do a specific color to make a, a model look like an heavy metal standard. And I think, you know, that's great for hobbyists like myself who are really into the painting. But for the general painter, these are terrific. It basically shows you step by step what your thing should look like. All you do is add one color. No mixing colors, no... Uh, pr you know, portioning out your mixtures. It's just really, really good. Then you've got your battle scrolls for your Dwarden Fire Slayers characters. And uh, on Magma Drop as, as well as on foot. So that's cool. You can just get this magazine and have your guys ready to go. You don't have to have the tune. In the back, I like the This Week in White Dwarf because it gives you little extra opinions on the design concepts. It gives you some tips, like this is a great tip. I don't know why they don't have this in the paint spatter article. 
keep your pieces of your model, model separate. Build them in sub-assemblies. And then a little bit more background there at the bottom. Then a reader's, or weapon of the week. And where's the reader's model of the week? That's always my favorite to look at because it's a non-games workshop. I guess they don't have it. Maybe I didn't see it. The last page is a great article, Regiments of Renown. You see an alternate color scheme for these Electro Priests, as well as a Lehman Rust tank with a cool conversion of an Astro Militarum guy on top. And this Tech Priest, which you get if you, I guess, collect the Lehman Rust and Tech Priest bundle that they have. So I guess overall, we're at 10 minutes and 33 seconds. I give this magazine a thumbs up. I'd get it, just because you have some great tips on how to paint the Magma Droth, as well as tips on how to paint any Fire Slayer. You can use the paint spatter on how they painted that guy for any Fire Slayer and have no problem. Overall, I'm glad that they started putting in different articles on things other than the Fire Slayers. Last week was kind of just a, you know, you're just inundated and just flooded with Fire Slayer stuff, history and design concepts and, and um, just modeling and gaming stuff. So it's cool to see them being a little bit more diverse. And hey, you know what? For a week's worth of content, I guess it's pretty good. So thanks for watching, everybody, and thank you for supporting me on Patreon. I hope to see you all in the next video. Laters!